In this uh, video part of our series, I want to focus on our beautiful stained glass windows here at St. Clair of Assisi Parish. That is, uh, the windows are based on uh, this wonderful hymn that St. Francis wrote in the uh, 12th century called the Canticle of Creation. But like my other videos, before I get into the specifics of our windows and the details of their art um, and beauty, I want to put it in the bigger context of um, sacred scripture and our church's teachings, specifically in this case, um, from that hymn of Canticle of Creation, the church's teachings um, on uh, caring for God's uh, creation um, ecology. So I'm standing in, in front of the Blessed Sacrament Chapel um, and I have before me um, two books. One is um, the lectionary that we use, sacred scripture that we read from on Sunday, and the other is a beautiful book that was given to me as a gift um, which has images um, of creation, particularly um, images shot from the Hubble telescope um, and the beautiful images of the galaxies. So all of the scriptures are just immersed with um, the writers being in awe of God and God's amazing creation um, all around us. And so every time we open up the scriptures, we have um, stories about this, but particularly in the first book of the Bible, Genesis, um, we have these beautiful details of of God creating each aspect of creation. And every time a day was finished, it says, and then God just was in marvel at it and he saw how good it was. So from that, um, we always, is the root of our Catholic teachings um, on a care of creation um, and a respect for all ecology and the study of creation. And so we have, um, uh, while well, the beauty of the scriptures talk about God creating the world, um, then we're blessed in modern days to have a telescope images of the beauty of God's creation as we see in here uh, different images of galaxies being formed um, and just exploding all the time and that we are just a speck in the immensity of God's um, awesome creation. With these things in mind, I think of God really as the first ecologist as he studied all that he was creating and marveling at it and continuing to see how um, it evolved. So this uh, teachings from the Bible then leads into the Catholic teaching um, how the care of creation is one aspect of the church's teachings on respect for um, all of life. Um, and uh, from the scriptures to our own U.S. bishops, um, constantly calling us to weave together all aspects of life because it's all sacred from God. And so our U.S. bishops a document on respect life issues weave together the importance of uh, caring for the baby in the womb, uh, to the poor and the marginalized, um, to the importance of uh, family life um, and the care of all creation. Together they make up one respect life theme of our Catholic theology um, and that you really can't separate one out from one from the other um, because it's all sacred. As we uh, pray in Eucharistic prayer um, three at mass, um, oh God, you make all things holy. And so from that sense, uh, we respect every part of life of the cosmos that God created as sacred and holy. So as I'm speaking, this is the fifth anniversary of Pope Francis's um, landmark encyclical called Laudato Si, um, which, which he uh, lays out um, the importance for us humans to um, take seriously the crucial issues um, that are affecting um, our planet and our, what he calls um, our home uh, that's been given to us um, from God. In a sense, it's no surprise that um, our present Pope um, chose the name Francis um, since we see in his papacy uh, two primary themes coming out. The first is uh, following the the teachings of St. Francis, Pope Francis, um, has a primary concern for the poor and really calling us Christians um, to look at the plight of the poor and, and all the aspects of poverty on a global level. And then secondly, um, his main theme is that of a care of creation, um, which is so important for us because he's basically saying um, in his writings and various conferences and uh, universal uh, meetings that he's had, that if we don't care and take care of planet Earth, then all of our other efforts of preserving human life really aren't gonna matter much if they don't have actually a planet to live on. But sadly, in our own country here, uh, this issue of ecology and uh, the scientific um, evidence for climate change has sadly become a political issue. Um, and Pope Francis is calling us Christians to grab a hold of this and remember this is a Christian issue 
that does not distinguish us to a political party, but rather it's rooted in scripture and the church's teachings of caring for planet Earth and our, our active involvement of putting an end to all those things that are affecting climate change so that we are truly respecting life in all of its forms, starting with this beautiful planet Earth, our mother home, as St. Francis calls it. This brief overview um, is important for the context of when our building committee uh, years ago um, was unanimous in deciding that we wanted to use that beautiful um, hymn of St. Francis, the Canticle of Creation, um, for the theme of our stained glass windows. It is important for us to continue to remind people that our worship in this space connects us to the worship of the rest of creation um, our, uh, that's taking place outside of this building as well. Because St. Francis is the one who called us in his spirituality to be a, more aware of God's presence all around us in the beauty of creation. And this teaching is followed up by St. Thomas Aquinas um, when he lists the five proofs for the existence of God. And he says the first thing you do is just notice the beauty and awesomeness of God's creation. And that's one of the primary proofs of the existence of God that comes to us from St. Thomas Aquinas. So in that context, um, I'd like to move now into talking more about um, the specific details of our stained glass windows here at St. Clair. So I want to say a little bit about um, selecting Elizabeth Devereaux um, as the artist for our windows. I first met Elizabeth actually at a dinner party. I was at a uh, conference many, many years ago um, of artists and architects um, uh, who are having conversations about church buildings. And so I met her at a dinner party, never knowing that I would eventually uh, get to know her well through uh, commissioning her for our stained glass windows. Um, but when we did, I had the great privilege of going out to visit um, Elizabeth uh, out at her studio in her home out in Chico, California. Um, and by the way, I want to say a little bit about um, her studio. Visiting there was so inspiring to see, first of all, her art and her faith um, and her, again, her love of creation. But being out at her studio was so inspiring because I actually got to be there while our windows were being um, created. And you see these big sheets of colored glass coming out of the, where she's hand blown them. And then she has them out um, uh, in her studio with these big windows. So lots of light is flooding through uh, these windows as well. And in the visit there, I get to see how the glass is hand blown and then how she uh, layers these colors. And as they're blended, then she cuts certain segments that then line up with her vision of watercolors that she actually painted for our windows as well. So you see these big swaths of colors um, that are blended together as she um, creates this beautiful stained glass. I actually didn't know much about stained glass when I first started this church building project. So I learned a lot from Elizabeth um, in terms of its history and how it's made and so forth. Um, but I didn't know stained glass one only from my own faith experience like many of you had. I grew up um, with called figurative stained glass with images of saints um, and so forth that were very inspiring and those were created to help teach people. Um, and then stained glass kind of evolved um, and nothing against that style but then we have more f um, uh, interpretive um, glass and Elizabeth really evokes her, her own spirituality. Um, particularly the, how she designs things that flow from creation and inspire people to think of God when they see the beautiful glass. My own experience of stained glass, in addition to the figurative glass in which I grew up with in my home parish, um, also comes from such great examples of locally here, uh, St. Francis Xavier College Church at St. Louis University and the beautiful deep blue windows in there that um, the pieces are so small you can't really uh, until you get up close what they um, what they're the story that they're telling but just the color evokes this prayerfulness um, in that beautiful church um, also locally um, at our own St. Louis uh, Cathedral Basilica beautiful two stained glass windows there rose windows that in a sense parallel ours that behind the great big uh, high altar um, is this beautiful window that's hardly seen unless you step to the side of these reds yellows and oranges that kind of are similar to ours kind of a brother son window and then in the back of the church in the choir loft is a beautiful bluish green one um, as well so those are images from our local communities then i think of other inspiring churches that some of you have seen pictures of or maybe visited um, all the way from uh, notre dame and in paris which is some of the very first stained glass window ever created in the 13th century and those are still original windows there 
and then the Chartres Cathedral um, in France as well that are just remarkable, again, from the 13th century. Some incredible windows there. And then you have unique contemporary ones um, at this uh, wonderful church, the Matisse Chapel down in the south of France. Um, it has these unique ones by that uh, famous artist uh, that stand out. So when I was looking at um, windows for our own uh, space um, and interviewing Elizabeth, I came to know her deep spirituality um, and her faith um, and also her um, active involvement in justice issues of ecology out in California. Elizabeth lives in Chico, California, when she's right in the middle of where many of the fires um, have taken place and are presently taking place as well. She's actively involved in helping with ecological issues out there um, for preventative of future fires, and also um, she's actively en engaged helping those who have lost their homes uh, from the fires. So from her spirituality then, we're blessed to have her do um, our windows as well as she talks about her deep awe of creation and when I talked to her recently about what rem she remembers about creating the windows, she goes, one of the things I wanted to evoke was how God's creation is so timeless. It takes us back billions of years. And she goes, I also wanted to show the connectedness of all creatures, that all animals, all species of trees and human life is interwoven as one sacred a blanket, if you will, of God's beautiful creation. So when we started the conversation with Elizabeth, um, we shared with her that our parishioners, uh, being more traditional, we wanted the, to keep the traditional rose window pattern, um, but then f give her the artistic liber liberty to um, design something that spoke more about each of the stanzas of St. Francis's poem. So the first stanza, uh, St. Francis talks about praising God um, for brother son, he calls. So he takes each element of creation and calls them his brother or his sister. He's trying to teach us about our interconnectedness with all of creation. So he talks about brother son, but um, what Elizabeth does is she has what's called um, flashed blown glass, where all these micro layers of color are eventually blended together um, and that's how she gets almost like a watercolor um, that I say almost has like this uh, carryover from Tiffany where things blend and flow so beautifully um, like a watercolor painting. So from that, I want to say a little bit more specific about our own um, brother-son window. And first thing when uh, Elizabeth was, uh, and I were talking about it was um, that she also studied uh, the new pictures that um, biologists have come up with, with images of an atom, um, that when atom was um, taken, picture of under a microscope, it also had this incredible sort of connection with images from the Hubble telescope, this, the explosion of creation um, in these galaxies, and yet all the way down to the minutest detail of a molecule, God has this colorful hand at play as an artist himself. So from, from that, if you will, uh, not that she took the atom as her design, but she started to create this flow of images. So St. Francis says, praise you God for brother's son. And he talks about uh, the sun, he says, thank you for the sun, how it gives us light during the day and the warmth of it to remind us of your love. And at the same time, um, Elizabeth paints sort of like the explosion of the cosmos at the beginning of times where God's love exploded into creation and from that flows um, all these colors. And notice another thing about her style um, are these um, lines that draw, it's a, it's a very um, energetic window, these various lines of the lead um, in between the glass pieces all swirl into um, a very small detailed center. So all of creation as we pray at Mass is being drawn into God and you see that with the swirling elements of both the colors and the lines. So in one sense, it's an explosion of God's love outward. At the same time, there's this energy of God's um, embrace drawing us all together, um, ultimately into his heart. So the window um, captures all of that going on there, um, but mostly uh, summarizes um, brother son giving us light and warmth as St. Francis taught us to be aware of, just the gift of the sun connected with all of creation and even our praise at mass. Before I uh, share my reflections on our other main rose window called Sister Moon, I wanna share with you kind of a little uh, a surprise gift that many of you don't get to see, but I'm uh, privileged to see when I'm presiding, and that is the reflection 
of the brother-son window in the glass windows above our main entrance door. So this is all above the baptismal font. Um, and in the reflection of the glass, um, brother son is looking down. And so you have kind of this whole um, uh, antiphonal experience of brother son and sister moon um, singing and praying with us during the liturgy. So above that now, we, um, I wanna talk briefly about um, the window, which again, uh, in the second stanza of St. Francis's Canticle Creation poem, he describes the moon and the wind and the seas and the waters as his sister. And I love that image of, he calls her sister moon. And so first of all, you get the big picture of all the beautiful blues and, and purple shades there. But then actually, if you look closely in the upper left corner, um, you actually have a very faint image of a full moon there uh, that Elizabeth put in there just to kind of hint at what this window is really all about. Um, and so from that, um, Sister Moon gives us, um, uh, Francis talks about, gives us light at the night, and she reminds us of your presence. And he says, uh, then he goes on to uh, talk about uh, the wind and sister air and every kind of weather. Um, he says, oh God, that you give as sustenance for your creatures. And then he says this next beautiful line, he says, and praise you God for Sister Water, who is very useful and humble and precious and chaste. And so you see in this window, this um, flow of, uh, of the waters and the winds and the, the seas and the stars. And once again, so you see the swirls of all of this being created by God. Um, and yet uh, then it just, at the same time as it's sort of expanding us to the, the bigness of the cosmos, again, of images that we see in the Hubble telescope. And yet at the same time, the swirls of the window draw us into the center and the microscopic ways that God is present in creation, even in our own lives. In a sense, every one of those dots and stars represent us joining in all of creation in praise of God. So as we think about um, this images, again, we think about the shortage uh, of water on planet Earth and caring for God's creation. This image, uh, this window calls us to continue to give praise to God for the gift of creation, but also it should move us um, to have a greater reverence, respect, and care for all of God's um, creation, especially these waters and winds and fresh air that give us life, all a gift from God. So I am in the Blessed Sacrament Chapel now, and I want to talk about uh, the nine uh, Gothic-shaped windows that we have back here that carry over from other verses in St. Francis's uh, Candle of Creation a poem. So uh, the first one is behind me, the center ones that most of you see during Mass as kind of a background, um, and it's this beautiful uh, portrayal um, of, in a sense, it represents several things. One from the from the hymn of St. Francis, we can see that Elizabeth has sort of represented um, the earth, um, especially um, our, our mother home earth, um, as we often say. So we see the planet and the beauty of when St. Francis talks about, um, praise you um, mother earth, for you give us life and sustenance. So you see sort of from the earth, um, Elizabeth has sort of portrayed like this fissure, if you will, um, and from it, life is coming out of the earth that gives us sustenance um, with all that we get from the earth in terms of our food and our water and so forth. So you see earth spending herself for us in that image um, as well. But at the same time, if you think about it, it can represent um, the earth as sort of broken, whether it be our humanity um, is broken and our divisions and so forth, and also the brokenness of Mother Earth in terms of um, the suffering that planet Earth is experiencing um, from some of, um, of our human waste um, or the way we have not cared for creation and the disposal um, of so much of God's beautiful creation. So it represents the beauty of Mother Earth giving us life and also represents sort of the, um, the crying out of Earth asking um, for us to be more caring um, for um, her sacred land. Then on another spiritual dimension, um, since we're in the Blessed Sacrament Chapel, the big round circle also represents um, the host at mass. Um, and so you see the host, like we do at the beautiful fraction rite, um, 
right uh, during the Lamb of God, the priest takes the host and breaks it very slowly. And that fraction right is so important because it represents that Jesus broke his body. He split his body in two so that blood and water, life uh, from his heart could flow out to the world. So as the host is broken, representing Christ's brokenness for us, it calls us to also be bread broken for the world. And then as that bread is broken into pieces, Christ feeds the world with his body at the same time then drawing us into one. So we have a beautiful image of the host as you see it broken up there in this window. Um, as the host is broken, you see almost like the flames of the Holy Spirit coming and giving life to the world through Christ broken and bruised for our world. In this uh, triptych window um, in the Blessed Sacrament Chapel, um, when you walk into the chapel to the right, um, we have these beautiful blue colors. So you got the, the bursting reds and oranges and yellows, and then these soft blues that sort of kind of the evolving of creation that uh, Francis talks about in his poem. So in this set, um, we look up and we see a couple things. Because uh, Francis is praising God for Mother Earth who gives us sustenance and food and, and all the grains of the earth. And the artist portrays several things. One is the, is the gift of rain coming down upon the earth. So you see that uh, coming through the sky. Two very signed details to the window to the furthest right. One is she plants um, a little splash of white color there representing a seed. So it is through humans co-creating with God that we uh, we plant the seeds that God has given to us, and then that little seed um, sprouts um, and gives us food. And you see that in the window also, there's sort of like a blade of grass that shoots up um, from creation. So uh, the artist um, invites us into, again, being in awe of God's creation and the cycles of the seasons, the cycles of the planting and harvesting, and that we partake in God. Um, providing uh, food for us and sustenance, always providing for everything we need. And this chapel allows us to pray in a deeper way by entering into the praise of all God's creation in our own prayer at Mass and in our own personal lives. So in this third set of windows, another triptych, um, Elizabeth carries over the theme of Francis' poem. Um, and first of all, we have these, um, what I call little flames of the Holy Spirit that carry through all of the windows and so each of those little swirls um, represent the Holy Spirit kind of being woven through our life and carrying us through life. And in the final window over here, it represents uh, St. Francis um, talking about death. And he calls death his sister death. Um, and Elizabeth portrays death as sort of a crescent moon in the far, far um, upper left window there. Um, and sort of at the crescent moon of our life, death comes, the artist portrays. Francis talks about death as his sister, um, and he wrote this last stanza of the hymn while he was close to death and facing much um, suffering, and he had to more than ever embrace his death, and he talked to his brothers and put this in the poem, that to embrace our death as our sister, um, because it's inevitable, first of all, and plus, once we embrace death as our sister, um, it allows us to continue to place our trust in God, to have no fear of dying, because through death, we actually gain eternal life. Through sister death, we walk into the loving arms of our God in eternal life in heaven. So I've shared with you some of the details about uh, the windows and their connection to the poem of St. Francis and the connection to our big rose windows. Um, but the other uh, scripture that comes to mind that I gave to Elizabeth um, for her to reflect and pray on when designing this space and its colors and its light and so forth um, is a scripture passage that means a lot to me because it's what I see uh, in the lives of our parishioners, uh, parishioners who are struggling with various things in their life from health issues, from parenting issues, um, to faith struggles, um, all kinds of things going on in their life. And the scripture uh, that most speaks to me for them as I pray with and for you is when Jesus says in Matthew's gospel, come to me, all you who are weary and tired, and I will give you rest. So I gave that scripture to Elizabeth and I said, I want you to have be praying over that scripture about creating a place 
to invite parishioners to come for rest and just to be in the presence of God. And that's what this Blessed Sacrament Chapel is for, is for you to find time before Mass, after Mass, during the weekday, to come into this beautiful space and sit with both the beautiful images of God's creation in the windows, but also just the space in the middle with God's presence in the middle in the Blessed Sacrament, to sit in the space and hear God say to you, come to me, all you who are weary and tired, and I will give you rest. Oh.